The way that we choose presidential candidates in the United States is pretty unique. In most countries, the parties themselves are responsible for choosing whoever they want their candidates to be. In the United States, we ask voters to decide. But our primary system isn't in the Constitution. It exists because of something that happened in 1968 at the Democratic National Convention. For the majority of American history, most states didn't have primaries. And the primaries that did exist were not like the ones we have today. They were basically like straw polls, non-binding votes that told party leaders which candidates were electable. But party leaders didn't have to listen to the voters. Instead, delegates from each state would meet at the national convention, wheel and deal, and eventually land on a presidential nominee. That was still the case in the late 60s. Back then, the Democratic Party was deeply divided. It was divided over the war in Vietnam. It was also divided over the civil rights movement. And the months leading up to the Democratic National Convention were very tumultuous. First, President Lyndon Johnson decided not to run for re-election. I shall not seek, and I will not accept, the nomination of my party for another term as your president. Then, Robert Kennedy, an anti-war frontrunner, was tragically assassinated. Together we are a great country, and a selfish country, and a compassionate country. And I intend to make that my basis for running and over the period of that year. In the end, there were two main contenders vying for the nomination. Hubert Humphrey, the establishment candidate, and Eugene McCarthy, the anti-war candidate. Anti-war activists realized that if they couldn't get a bunch of delegates who supported Eugene McCarthy to the convention, he wasn't going to get nominated. Now, if this happened under the system that we have today, McCarthy supporters would just need to get a bunch of people to go out and vote for McCarthy in the primary in order for him to win the nomination. But that's not how things worked back then. Even if, say, 50% of a state supported Eugene McCarthy, that didn't mean that 50% of the state's delegates would actually go to the convention to vote for McCarthy. This upset a lot of McCarthy supporters, and it set them on the path to change the Democratic Party rules for selecting the nominee. NYPD and the invaders will not be seen tonight so that ABC News can bring you color coverage of the 1968 Democratic National Convention. <laughs> This all came to a head at the Democratic National Convention in 1968 in Chicago, which was an absolute disaster. Outside the convention hall, there was basically a riot, but inside the convention hall was pretty chaotic as well. Famously, Dan Rather, the reporter, got punched in the stomach on national television. It was a whole fiasco. It was obviously getting roughed up. We tried to talk to the man, and we got uh, bodily pushed out of the way. And essentially, because Hubert Humphrey had the support of party insiders, he ended up winning the nomination. The anti-war part of the Democratic Party was pretty upset with how the whole thing shook out. They put forward a proposal to change the rules of the Democratic Party so that the delegates that go to the National Convention have to fairly reflect the preferences of the people in the state where they came from. It's debated whether or not a lot of the delegates on the floor actually even understood what they were voting for. But they passed it nonetheless, and it amounted to a complete overhaul of the party nominating system in America. What happened next is Democrats lost the 1968 election to Richard Nixon. And in the aftermath of that loss, they created a commission to put the new rules into effect. And those new rules were almost surprisingly effective. By 1972, every state in the country had implemented the new rules that the party put forward all future state delegations would have to reflect the preferences of voters in that state. And the changes didn't just apply to Democrats. The new rules required changing state laws. So Republicans eventually ended up adopting those changes as well, creating the primary system we have today. On its face, this new system seems a lot more democratic. The nominees are no longer chosen in these proverbial smoke-filled rooms. Now the voters get to decide. But as with a lot of things in American politics, it's a lot more complicated than that. In the next few episodes, we're going to look at the consequences, both intended and unintended, of those changes that began in 1968.
Come back next week to learn more about our primary system, and make sure you subscribe below so you never miss a video. For an even deeper dive on the American primary system, check out the 538 Politics podcast, where we have a three-part series all about it.